I said, God is awesome. Uh, listen, I don't need folks who are too afraid of their issues and their problems. I need people who understand that God is bigger and greater than all of them. God is awesome. Have you not known, have you not heard that he is the everlasting God? He does not faint, nor does he grow weary. He is awesome. Say, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. You know the song, sing it out loud. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever you are. Sing it again. My God is awesome. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. I need you. I already know what type of night this is going to be. Sing it. Oh, God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Let's make one big choir. Everybody sing, my God. My God is awesome. <laughs> I already feel Jesus like awesome. He is awesome. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, sit up the thumb, sit up the heart, invite somebody in, come on. Good morning, good morning, sit up the thumb, sit up the heart. Invite somebody in, come on, come on. Good morning, good morning. Sit up the thumbs, sit up the hearts, invite somebody in. Come on, come on. Good morning, good morning. Come on, tag your people in, tag them in. Come on. I won't be long. Come on, tag them in, tag them in. My God is awesome. Good morning, Sister Larice. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, tag your people in. Come on, come on. Come on, tag him in, tag him in, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Two more minutes, two more minutes, two more minutes. Come on, come on, come on. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Say good morning to Pastor T. Let me know you're here. Come on, tag everyone. You know I got a word, y'all. I'm trying to, I was trying to keep my composure today. I was trying to stay calm. But something is brewing that I believe God gave me for you today. Come on, tag everybody. You know Tremel, tag them.
Tag them in, tag them in, Damien. Tag your people, tag your friends, tag your family, even tag your enemies. Yes, I do. Woo. Come on, tag them in. And you're tagging your people in, do me one huge favor. Before we dive into the meat of this message, I need every one of y'all to please do me one huge favor. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. I'm going to give you a minute and 15 seconds, but I need y'all to share and tag people right now. Pastor T got a word, y'all. I'm going to be quick because I'm going to say this for 2 o'clock, y'all. We're talking about the UO door of God. God said, let's go back and revisit the UO door. We're talking about the kingdom of God and the UO door is a part of the kingdom. Come on, just type in. After you shared it, just type in, I shared it. started again I'm appreciative that you all are here I don't take it for granted when people take out time in their busy schedule just to hear what Pastor T has to say and for that I say thank you for that I'm appreciative of you all man I'm telling you all I'm excited about what God is doing to say that I am excited is an understatement I believe if you are in the Chicagoland area you would do yourself a disservice by not getting to oh my god by not getting to two Washington Boulevard today. And I know I extend this invitation often and each time I extend the invitation, God bags me up. But it's something about today. If you are in Chicago, Wisconsin, Indiana, Minnesota, pack your bags now, get in the car, get there now. Start get, getting on your people's nerve right now. Pastor Brent and I, we need y'all to be our guests today because, man, we've, we've, we've experienced God this weekend in such a phenomenal way. And uh, when I tell you that my life has been changed ever since Friday, we went to a conference called Life Surge, and, and uh, this conference jumpstarted my life. It, it, it caused me to reevaluate life. It caused me to make me believe and make me know that Terrence, it's time again, no longer making excuses to be about your father's business and, and God is setting us up and then on last night uh, we went to a life changing concert with my friend, again I call him my friend Todd Delaney, you know I often tell him, I say you know I was I was one to put you on the map uh, you hit your first concert with me with with my ministry so uh don't you forget about me <laughs> but last night it was amazing and um today i'm telling you this ain't one of those services that you want to put off you want to get to two washington boulevard today if someone could please be my personal moderator and just type that in type the address of the church um i want to talk about the you odo of god which is also talking about the kingdom of God. God hit me to go back and he said, I want you to study this thing, Terrence. I want you to go back and talk about the Yodo. And uh, how many of us know that sometimes when God tell us to stay at a particular place, sometimes our patience can grow weary and even worn. But I knew God wanted me to say this or go back to this thing because it was brewing in my spirit since Friday night. And I knew if I moved out of that place, of consecration, 
I was going to miss something that was going to cause a metamorphic change, not only in my life, but those lives who are connected to me. And as of late, it seems as if the entire world has been on an edge. Many of us, we're seeing gas prices inconsistent. One day we had almost $10 a gallon, the next day we down to $3. And, 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 and we're seeing food costs uh, seemingly are at a place called unaffordable. Never in all of my days have I seen a pack of chicken wings. 12 chicken wings costing almost $25. That's absurd. And we're seeing, we're seeing people, we, we're in a place called survivor mode. And it seems as if this is about to become our new normal. God spoke to me and said, Terrence, many, this will become their reality. But he assured me concerning us as his children that we will not suffer lack. I need about 15 of you all, even those of you all that are watching the replay. Just type in, I will not suffer lack. Come on, I need y'all to hurry up and do this, y'all. I got something to say. And so, as you're typing, I got to continue. And so, one thing that's undeniable, and that is, evil is here to stay. Then Jesus said, Terrence, this is a season in which the gray areas aren't an option. At first, I didn't understand what Holy Spirit was trying to convey. Then he took me to John chapter number 10, verse number 10. I need for you all just to type in, someone please be my personal moderator, just type in John chapter number 10. And, and, and as you're typing, I got to continue because uh, I'm on a time schedule for this 10 o'clock moments with Pastor T. This is what the writer uh, was writing. And it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. He says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So, 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 so. He said, Terrence, this is the season in which two roads of life are about to collide. He said, the thief who is the devil does not come except but to kill, steal, and to destroy. But he said, the rescuer comes that you may have life and that you may have that more abundantly. And then he said, Terrence, don't stop there. I need you to go to 3 John, chapter 3 John 2 and 3. Don't stop there. Again, someone please be my personal moderator uh, for, to bag up what I'm saying, uh, what the word of God is conveying. This is what the writer wrote down. He says, beloved, whenever you see the word beloved or behold as a prophetic announcement, right? He says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Then he says, read verse number three in that same passage. Look at what it says in verse number three in that same third John two. Look at what it says. He says, for I rejoiced that's past tense. He says, I rejoice greatly. What is the writer saying? He said, before the foundation of this world, before the enemy was going to attack you, I already knew that you were coming out victorious. Oh, God. He says, for I rejoice. So in other words, I don't care how many calamities are going on. I don't care what tragedies you are facing. I don't care what your bank account look like. I don't care what's going on right now in your current state of being. The writer is telling, he says, but I rejoice. The reason why he says I rejoice, he says, because if the people of God can get to this realization of who they are, they understand that where they are is only a temporary situation. He says, for I rejoice greatly. When the brethren, when the sistering came and testified. God said, you got to testify even about what you're going through. He said, you got to testify. He said, when the brethren and the sister came and testified of the truth, that it is in thee, even as though thou walkest in the truth. First, I'm having a, a, first I'm having a, a stuck moment. I'm having what you call a blind moment. He said, Terrence, I need for you to look at this word rejoice. I need someone to please be my personal moderator. Those of y'all that can type... Uh, 85 words a minute just type this definition of the word rejoice and, and, and so I looked at this word rejoice and now I get excited about this passage of scripture he said Terrence read that again read that again so as I'm reading he stops me and said Terrence not only do I want you to prosper I want your health to be in perfect pitch of health I want to make sure that you're surrounded around those that support and believe in you and I want to make sure that as you're growing in life, that money will never, ever be an issue for you for the rest of your life. 
Oh my God. Maybe I, I should have saved this for, for, for church because y'all not ready. Look what he says. He said, Terrence, this is the part of the scripture that the people don't get. And that is, this is the part of, of the plans for the believers. He then led me to, to, to Jeremiah chapter number 29. Come on, y'all. We're having just a little Bible class this early in the morning. Somebody just read. Somebody just type in Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse 11. Through 12. I know this is a very familiar passage of scripture. This is some of y'all's favorite scripture, but I want to give you all something that God gave me. He says, he says, uh, this is for three of y'all. He says, you about to have an epiphany. You about to have an aha moment. Look at what he says. Look at what the look at what the writer says. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. Thank you, Sister Paula, for putting the definition of rejoice. I thank you. I appreciate that. He said, then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Then God said, Terrence, I want you to focus on these two words, these two scriptures, and that is go. If you notice that the word go is in both of those passages of scripture, right? So now I'm looking at the word go. Look at what the word go means. The word go means to move to one place to another, change locations. Then he said, Terrence, many people has confused the movement from progress. So in other words, just because you're moving don't mean you're making progress. So now it's all coming to me. And he said, Terrence, now put this all together. So in other words, you were, you were informed before you were formed. Let me say that again. You were informed before you were formed, which means he says, I already had your plans. I already had your blueprints mapped out. But I couldn't shift you into your place of destiny until you went into your place of prayer. Maybe y'all didn't hear what I just said. He says, I already knew your plans. I already knew the blueprints. I already knew the strategies. I already knew your goals. He says, but I couldn't shift you into your place called destiny until you went into this place called prayer. He says, when you went into this place called prayer, he says, now I am about to reveal to you the plans that I have for you. And this has been the problem for many of us. And that is, we have road mapped our own plans, our own destiny, our own goals, but we haven't sought the face of God for his plans for our own life. Many of us, we say, well, I believe this is God. I feel this is the right thing to do. And God says, not one time in your feeling and your believing that you consult me. And that's the reason why your life is at a place called chaotic. That's the reason why your life is at a place called topsy-turvy. That's the reason why many of y'all are in a place called Babylon, which means confusion. It's because you went on your feelings and you didn't consult God. And he says, whenever you don't consult me and you go by your feelings, you will always make a mess of your entire your life and for this reason alone this is why for many of y'all you're living a frustrated life because you're coming up with your own plans and not the plans of God that he has already road mapped for your life and that's why many of us we moving from state to state we're going here thinking well if I move to Atlanta if I move to Houston if I move move to Dallas then I can start over but God re emphatically and told me to tell you that I don't care where you move you're gonna take you wherever you go yes I understand this thing called scenery yes I understand this thing called different environment but the environment starts in your mind the change starts in your spirit and until you get the change in your mind mind until that thing rests in your spirit you can move to hawaii and still take chicago with you <laughs> Ooh, he says whenever god isn't included he can't prosper self-promotion let me say that again whenever god isn't included he can't prosper self-promotion let me say that one more time because i believe about five of you all is about to hit you again he said whenever i am never included in your plans i can never ever promote self-promotion so now god speaks to me and said terrence <laughs> he said many will get excited about this scripture but will not follow up with the scripture many of us we get excited about the word of god but we don't follow through with the word of god so in other words here's prophecy 101 let me let me take you to prophetic class 101 this is what he says god says i'm not obligated 
to bless you based on what they heard. He says, but I'm mandated to bless them based on what they're doing. <laughs> Let me get up because y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all just not ready. He says, he says, he says, I'm not obligated to bless you based on what you hear only right because we know faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God right so he says he says but I'm mandated to bless them based on what they're doing and then he says Terrence I want you to look at the word hearken if someone can please and put be my personal moderator and just type this one word hearken h-e-a-r k-e-n hearken look at what Webster describes the word hearken Webster describes hearken as to listen so now God tells me he says Terrence now it all is about to make sense let's put it all together and I wrap this part up he said Terrence when the when the, when the people of God start obeying my word seek my plans for their lives go into their prayer chambers concerning what I've written out for them he says then when they come out of prayer, this is what Jeremiah 29 verse number 12, just in case you wasn't paying attention, I want to help speed this process up for you. He says, when the people come out of prayer, because remember in verse number 12, he talked about go into prayer. So he says, when they come out of prayer, what I said, not only would I listen, that means hearken. He says, not only would I listen to them, but all of heaven is about to pack them up. So in other words, God says, the reason why many of y'all can't get to your expected end because you haven't set up a place called tabernacle. The reason why many of y'all can't get to your expected end is because you haven't went into this place called prayer. You've been murmuring and complaining. You've been talking, you've been talking yourself through your situation, but you haven't told God, God, what is it that you have for me? Yeah, God says, I understand. He says, I'm not a blind God. He says, if you were in if you was in in in, in, in Mars, I'm still there. If you was in Jupiter, I'm still there. He says, but what sense does it mean for me to show up if you ain't told me to come? So, 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 he said, he said, I want you to look at something. I want you to notice something in both of those passages of scripture. There's great potential. One is speaking about abundant life. John 10, 10, speaking about abundant life, right? And, and, and the other one is speaking about prosperity for the believers. But if you notice, if you notice, as I always tell you, that prophecy is always done under condition. So in other words, God isn't moving until we move. I need about 15 of you all just to type in, I'm moving on God's turn. Come on, come on. I need about 15 of y'all just to type in, I'm moving on God's turn. Come on, come on, 15 of y'all, even those of y'all that are watching the replay, just type in, I'm moving on God's turn. And as you're typing, I want a, another 15 to say, God, I'm no longer making excuses why I'm not moving. Come on. I need the other 15 to just to type in, I'm no longer making excuses or, to God or telling God the reason why I'm not moving. So in other words, God says, you want me to take the initiative? God says, I'm not taking the initiative. He says, I told you to do something. He says, what did I tell you to do? What did I tell you to do? You want to put all the onus on me, but you don't want to work? You want to you wanna, you wanna tell me all your problems, but you're not willing to worship me. You want to tell me all your problems, but you're not willing to turn your plate down. Because I found out this one thing. It's one thing to pray. It's one thing to pray. And prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so good. I never underestimate the power of prayer. But there are some things, I'm getting ready to mess some of you religious folk up. There are some things that prayer alone can't do. And that's the reason why Jesus picked it up. He says, Terrence, tell this not people, tell the religious people, bust a bubble right here that think that prayer alone is going to work. He told them in the in the old the New Testament, he says, he says, there are only some things that only gonna come through prayer and fasting. And so have it ever have it ever done you? Have you ever had an epiphany? Have it ever came to you? He said, man, maybe I've been praying. But I haven't killed my flesh. Maybe I've been praying, but maybe I haven't isolated myself. Maybe I've been praying, but I haven't turned that wretched television TV show off. Maybe I've been praying, but I haven't stopped and I haven't stopped gossiping. Maybe I've been praying, but I haven't changed my cantankerous ways. And God says, when you fast, then now the the portals are open. Now that you're in this place called fasting, now I can show you the reason why your prayers aren't being answered. So look at what he said. He said. He says. He says. God isn't moving until we move. God isn't shifting even if we're stuck. 
God isn't shifting if we're operating in if we're operating in a place of disobedience. Many of us we think because we can quote God's word that what we quote will happen automatically. It won't happen automatically because even the devil know the word of God. And this is why the Bible says faith without works are dead. So in other words, if your actions aren't bagging up the word, in essence, what you're doing is saying, but not applying. <laughs> Let me say that again. He says, so in essence, what you're doing is saying, but you're not applying. Many of us, we heard plenty of messages on gaining the world and losing your soul. But, but let us back, go back to 3 John chapter number 2, through chapter, chapter 2, 2 through 3. Look at what it says, and I'm done. Y'all got to get this at 2 Washington Boulevard. Because I'm not about to give y'all all my message today. Look at what it says. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosperous, be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. Look at verse number 3. They go to the word rejoice. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren and the sister came and testified of the truth that it is in thee even as thou walkest in the truth. Now, look at, let's zoom in on the UODO of God. Let's zoom in on this word, prospereth. P-R-O-S-P-E-R-T-H. Prospereth. There's a T-H at the end, which means there's a continuation. Whenever you see the T-H at the end word, there's a continuation. So, so, so. If you notice, John 10, 10 tell us that we may have life. This passage says that we may prosper. Abundant life and prosperity will not fall out the sky and hit us on the head because we repeat the sinner's prayer. The Greek word for prosperous is uodo. All right? Uodo. E-U-O-D-O-O. -O. Uodo. Someone just typed that one word. Uodo. E-U-O-D-O-O. -O -O. Uodo. Look at what you odo means again. I'm, I'm 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 backtracking, but I'm fast forwarding all at the same time, which means to get help on the world, to succeed in business affairs, and to have a prosperous journey. That's what you odo means. Let me give it to you again. It means to get help on the road, to succeed in business affairs, and to have a prosperous journey. So in other words, God knows that while we're walking by faith, it will not be easy. God knows that while we're on this journey called life, he understands there's going to be some bumps on the road. God understands that while you're on this journey called life, you're going to be hit with many blows. You're going to be blindsided by some things that you never saw coming. He knew that our children were going to act up. He knew that we were going to make some decisions that we shouldn't have made. He knew that we were going to get entangled with some people that we shouldn't have gotten entangled with. He knew that we was going to get into some business deals with some people that we shouldn't have got in business with. And because we ignore the, the voice of God, many of us, we went by what we felt. We went by what it felt like. We went by our gut and didn't even realize that our gut and our feelings was getting us in trouble. But God says, that's when the Uodo of me steps in. So, so the Uodo promised us that help is on the way. I need about 18 people, even those of you all that are watching the replay, just type in, help is on the way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, just type in, help is on the way. Come on, come on, just type in, help is on the way. That's the you old though, help is on the way, it's on the way. So, 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 so look at what God is saying. God is saying right now, Terrence, tell those, of those, tell those that are watching you right now that really want the help of God. Those of y'all that want the help of God, just type in, God, I want your help. Come on, I just need for you to just type in, God, I want your help. Come on, come on, those of y'all that want the help of God, just type in, God, I want your help. My God. Oh, so Oh, my 
Just type in God, I want your help. Come on, just type in God, I want your help. I'm only talking about eight. I'm only talking to eight people right around here. Just type in God, I want your help. It's a tap man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need about three people. Just type in God, I want your help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look at this now. Those of you all that say you want the help of God, God said, Terrence, here's the give them the answer right here. Those of y'all that just, you just said that you want the help of God, right? Here go the answer of God that you say you want, right? Every one of y'all that type that you, you want God's help. God said, tell them under no circumstances. Make no excuses. Meet me at 2 Washington Boulevard today. Those of y'all that want the help of God, you wrote it down. I don't care where you are. You can be in Wisconsin. Minnesota, Indiana God said your answer Is at 2 Washington Boulevard today If you reject this help Chances are You may you may remain stuck God says I'm about to give you the answer And the reason why God said get to 2 Washington Boulevard He said there is a woman With the issue of blood anointing At 2 Washington Boulevard What does that mean? That means that she pressed beyond her comfort zone I know it's easy to stay home. I know it's easy to say, well, I got what I need. No, 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 you ain't got what you need. God said, what you need is in the building. I dare you to meet Pastor Terrence, Pastor Sabrina, along with the Faith World Family Worship Center community. Meet us at two o'clock. The doors will open at 1.30. You are without an excuse. You just said, Lord, I need your help. And God said, I'm about to give you the answer. So you're without an excuse. Amen? If this message bless you, I need for you. If you want to sow, gazelle information at the bottom of the screen. The cash app is at the bottom of the screen. But whatever you do, do not miss today's service. Because the old door of God is going to meet you there. Don't stay home. As a matter of fact, I need every one of y'all to do me one huge favor before I log off. Before I log off, I know you may have did it once. But I need y'all to do it one more time. I need y'all to share this again. Come on, share it again. We share everything else. Come on, I need y'all to share it again. Come on. Come on, I need y'all to share it again. Come on. And after you share it, just type in, I shared it. Come on. After you after you share it, just type in, I shared it. Come on. And I'm done. God is awesome. I say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Come on, sing it out real loud. Awesome. Awesome. Come on, this is my verse right here. You gotta sing it though. Awesome. My God is awesome. My I'm telling you, help us there. I'm asking God, God, why am I going back to the U O D O? I'm asking God, God, why am I going back to the U O D O? He said, because you never finished it. We about to experience the U O D O of God. Get there. This past the tea. I'm out of here, y'all. If you enjoyed this, just type it. I enjoyed this past the tea. Washington Boulevard and for those of y'all that are coming in at the tail end watch this again I'm telling you God is on this line watch it again get to 2 Washington Boulevard what you been believing God for I believe by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost is going to meet you there today you got more than enough time it's just 10.30 we start at 2 o'clock the doors going to open at 1.30 